My country people, not believe me when I go see this Jackie Chan movie, oh hey. If you not see what the dog are doing, if you not see what this man do, even children, the Gen Z age, you will get it, not go do what this man do. Hmm. Wait till cause fights. Now, Usman, they invite Como, they invite Usman, make it come talk. Usman come talk, say, okay, the Northerners, they, they suffer. They, you know, the man was just concentrating on the state of the nation. Just they talk generally, but he was emphasizing more on the Northerners. As you don't talk, finish show, now this man, the pastor, come talk, saying, go come out, come reply. If you not see what this man talking, he is seeing only Tinubu, now if he make Nigeria work. See, apart from Tinubu, no other person if he make Nigeria work. Hey, my country people, and Mokuna, you settle down, watch this video. But before this viral picture went off full everywhere, they say, make Tinubu go rest. And I also sleep, now they sleep for any summit. Now go. this one, I come make PDP, come advise Tinubu and all the APC say, come. If you not feel carry us along again, as you promise, I beg, make you not resign. Tinubu, la wo wo. With a Beg you now, I beg resign. As our constant bolo for our now, dear, the former head of state, they call Ibrahim Babagida, come they tell Tinubu say, guy, if you not they careful, the way things they go on, so military fee take over. Oh, mm. now this one I come make bolo and make come begin they sit down, come they talk with the people. They come they tell and say, make it not they import food come Nigeria again. Say make they begin they focus on their own production. But how this one want to sustain us? Looking at the insecurity, where it they affect our farmers. My country people, Tinubu no know where input in Lego. The word of the mention subsidy is removed. Now it bring us come here with this. So for another video, we don't go viral. They come they accuse Peter B of the money where they donate, give and make it a do election. Say make it come account for her. Now there Peter B come out to say the one hundred and fifty million dollars, including the one you bring come and the one we propose they support them, they can't break and down small, small, and they take spend them. He can't they tell people, say, government, where he be say, enough he account for your expenditure, not be governmental. Say, this government who your get so under Bola, I met, you know, not mm -hmm. be account for how they take they spend something. They are honored to the poor mouth for big, big money, but they know they come out to tell us how they take spend that money. He say, he promise, not that one I in talk, see, he be one do. How they take they spend money for this country, where money they go. How they they follow up money, not be the thing we need for this country, not be the money itself. As we they talk right now, men don't mount for street. Oh, in fact, eh, the protest now, nah, nah, nationwide protest, the way things they go up where well, where well, over 1000 percent. I've been at 2000 percent. I've been at my people, we don't tire to they follow the percentage. As at the time, we they read this news, my country people. Uh, estimate, thank God, estimate, and the boy estimate. As we they talk right now, we they yes in a thirteen thousand era. Now it be now thirteen thousand era. What do we they buy two weeks ago? Six thousand seven hundred naira. You don't enter thirteen thousand naira, my country people. The week ahead, we don't know what I go enter fifteen, sixteen, even twenty thousand. APC government, what do we do now? We na enter for eight years, we suffer. Another year, we don't see enter again, and for another eight years, we see suffer, my country people. This is getting too. Much whether not the APC itself or the individual government, we do not know. But nevertheless, make I live on a mokuna watch all these two videos. Mokuna see the heart of man as Bible talk. They say it's desperately wicked. My country persona be OD TV, but make I live on a mokuna watch this video. Right, I'm sure that you followed uh yesterday's interview uh with Professor Yusuf. Um, and of course the issues that he yeah, yeah. described were basically uh to assess the state of the nation. And as we read out in the intro, uh, he put the blame squarely on the lap of the president and his team. And then, you know, to use the street parlance, a lot of people will say, where's the lie? What are your thoughts? And of course, you know, you have the right of reply. What are your thoughts on what he said? And do you think that he went overboard or you just basically would like to either disagree or put things in proper perspective? Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Usman Yusuf came on your station yesterday to basically uh, make incitement to propagate disunity. And basically make uh, a mockery of himself. 
That's that's that 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 is what he did at his age, which is just too shameful. Now, what what is the 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 uh, present situation in Nigeria? We we have citizens who are going through uh, serious challenges. And our problem is not even lack of food. We don't. Even you, Stephen, should know that we don't, do not have lack of food. We are not lacking food in this country. It is the money to buy the food. Professor, you still said the same thing yesterday. Then? You said the same thing yesterday. Uh, 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 you said? I said, Prof, said I don't the care same what thing said, yesterday. Seriously. <laughs> but you have to put things in perspective yes, so that but, you know but, but precisely you what you are responding you gave, to. Yes, yes, excuse me. You gave him opportunity to gaslight, to basically, um, uh, he, was, he was even on the verge of calling for insurrection. Sorry, That's what, what he was doing. He and I was so ashamed of it. In what way did he gaslight? He, he, he was, he was, excuse, excuse me, he was totally gaslighting. In what he was way? totally gaslighting. What did he say he was that talking, was gaslighting? He was talking, beautiful, he was talking about nothing, uh, 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 Nigeria, certain Nigeria, not a leader, this, as if he's the spokesman he of the Sultan. Said as if he's the he spokesman. Actually said that Good God. He actually said that mm. President Tinubu's policies have caused mm. discomfort for everyone across the country and not just only in the north. And That's that if northern clerics or traditional rulers are coming out to speak about the crisis that they face, that they are the first line of not, defense as, for me, his people. Excuse me, please. He is not the spokes... Will, will you let me speak? Yes. This is my right of reply. Excuse me, I personally called Prince Unduka Obaikbena for this right of reply. If you will let me speak, for God's sake. Okay? Now, he came here... He, pre, he, he, he claimed to be speaking for Northern traditional rulers. He is not the spokesman of Northern traditional rulers. This, his eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, is my friend. I have been to his house. I have eaten food with the Sultan. He's not the spokesman of the Sultan, for God's sake. He just comes here. This is someone who was sacked from his job. Then he comes here. He starts... Uh, 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 try to push the north against the south. And you gave him a platform. And you know the kind of character he is. A cantankerous character. That's who he is. That's what Professor uh, 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 Yusuf is. Then he, he, keeps, he keeps saying, not, 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 not. Not what? We are one Nigeria for God's sake. We are all in this together. Now, you, you, have, you have a governor in, in, uh, in Niger State who says food should not move down south. Oh, that is the game we are going to play in this country? Then what does uh, governor, my own governor, uh, uh, Sheriff uh, Oborewari do? He says, let no... Uh, does he say let no f uh, crude oil flow to uh, Dangote refinery in Lagos? Then what does Jiden Sawalu do? He says no tanker of oil should move to Niger State. Are we not one country for God's sake? Let nobody, let nobody in this country threaten another person. Did you hear me? Nobody should threaten, a nobody has a monopoly of anything. We are one country. Okay, your so guest sure. yesterday is a most ill, excuse me, your guest yesterday was, was behaving most irresponsibly. He's not the spokesman. This Sultan of Sokoto is my friend. My cousin, Air Vice Marshal Terry Okoro Dudu, introduced me to him. Okay? He's not the spokesman of the Sultan. He's not the spokesman of the Emma of Kano. He's on his own. And you gave him the opportunity to keep gaslighting yesterday. You did not push back on him. 
If I can come and in here, Mr. Onapasa. And he was talking Onapasa. utter rubbish Okay, Mr. Age. Onapasa, we need to realize that. Uh, I'm going to take a quote from our, our guest yesterday who said, leaders have forfeited the right to make any excuses. Now, you are a prominent public affairs analyst and you're a legal expert closely associated with the Tinubu Media Support Group. What are your reflections on Professor Usman Yusuf's critique of the current administration's handling of Nigeria's economic challenges, especially speaking on the recklessness of the government, as he's described. An example he gave being the sudden which, removal which, of which fuel reckless, subsidy. With the, I'm about to tell you that. Being the fuel subsidy removal without looking at the balance sheet of the nation or consulting I, with, I, uh, with, I, a, with a cabinet that was barely there. The body language looks like this administration does not that. have please, a plan. Please. How do you refute that? Do We're you seeing you the you effects. Are you are, you are, I'm just asking you a question, Mr. Anakwasa. You are gaslighting. You, yes, I have heard your question. Can okay. you let me speak for God's sake? You can speak You are now. gaslighting. Which, which irresponsibility of which administration? If, are we going to use your uh, grandparents' money to pay for, for subsidy? No, they did not see the eight years of waste, of printing of money, of borrowing money to pay for what? To put money in their own pockets. It is today we want to, want to do what? Do which protests? Listen to me. All these things won't work. Do you know the kind of people that support this government? It's people who love truth, who love this country. Okay? People who love the truth and who love, genuinely love this country, not rent seekers, not thieves, who want to keep putting subsidy money in their pockets. All right? There was no money to pay subsidy. It was eight years of grotesque irresponsibility. Okay? Now, you gave this guy more than an hour yesterday to start gaslighting. So, so he was on the verge of insurrection, that's of not, treason. That's not correct, Mr. Anopasa. We didn't no, give him, no, we didn't give him more than one hour. He was, Mr. Anopasa, listen, correct, li listen, let's calm down so that we can hear uh, each other better. We didn't give him more than one hour. We gave him a slot minutes. that was barely 30 minutes. I mean, he made this point. Why don't you just respond to the issues that he raised right. rather than claiming it, that everybody's it, gaslighting? He did not make any point. I am. I am. I am responding to the point. If you will let me. All right. If you will let me respond, yeah. please. All right, Mr. Anakwasa. If you will let me respond, please. All right, Mr. Anakwasa. Now, let, let us just go to the details we here. We one country. Can we go to the details here, Mr. Goji, Onakwa, sir? Good. How are you? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, 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 good morning, my adorable Oji. All right, Let, let's just go to the details here. There were a lot of accusations. First of all, uh, Professor Yusuf Usman accused President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of nepotism after he appointed his son-in-law as the head of Federal uh, Housing Authority. He also talked about how this administration has pushed more Nigerians into multi-dimensional poverty because of some of his policies. I'd like for you to respond did to those he, two. Did, Le he, did he? Let me just land. My main I question. Am not, I am not, I am not. My main question, I because, because it is, script, sure, yes. it, is okay. your, it is your right of reply. And I'd like for you to respond to those accusations. That's yes. number one. So, number yes, two. So I am, I, I, sure. I am. Sure. Number two. My I am responding. Will sure. you let me respond? Go ahead. I on, will on, not dance to your tune. No problem. On those two My accusations. God, you will have to give me some respect. Sure, sir. On Beautiful. those two accusations. Now, let us. It is a, it's a conversation for God's sake. Absolutely. You will let me speak. Go ahead, sir. Go My ahead. adorable daughter, please let me speak. Go ahead, sir. You, the Good. floor is yours. You, I adore you. Let Thank me you. speak. Now, now, which nepotism is he talking about? Is it the nepotism we saw the last eight years? He wants to protest what? What is anybody threatening in this country? Who? Threatening who? That you will stop food from coming from north to south. Then the people from south should stop what they produce to go to, go to the north. Do we still have a country? What is wrong with people in this country? 
We are striking who? Seriously. We have one country. Listen, I think Steve, uh, uh, my brother Steve Ayoye will understand this better. I will mention one word. One nation, one destiny. It was the mantra during the era of Shehu Shagari. If nobody there understands that, Steve most certainly will understand it. I do understand okay? it. Yes, one nation. Let's respect yes. each other. Nobody, nobody should threaten, threaten another person in this country. Okay. We are all in this together. All right, Mr. We Ali. have a president in this country. Our president means well. Please let me speak. Our president means well. He is working hard to put things together. Do you even know the biggest problem we had the last eight years? When all these people, their voices were silent. The problem was the emasculation of President Tinubu from the, if, if President Tinubu's touch was in the government this last eight years, we will not be where we are today. All right. Okay. We are trying to get off, get out of a, a difficult situation. Then somebody comes on on, uh, on on television and starts threatening people that he will do what? Governor Bango says is uh, he wants to uh, stop food moving from uh, from Niger State. Should I stop food from moving from Delta State to his state? What an insult! All right. We are one country. Let us rest. Listen, nobody. Excuse me. Nobody is afraid of anybody. Okay. Let nobody threaten anybody in this country. All Please. Right. All right. What an insult. Sure. Rubbish. All right, All right Mr. Anakwasa, you've talked about, about threat a lot. But I asked a question, and it was just a question about nepotism, which you have not answered yet. But I'll yes. skip that. I'll, I'll, I'll skip, I'll skip said, that question. I said, I said, is the nepotism? Mm -hmm. No, is the nepotism. Whatever nepotism is embellishing, is it worse than the nepotism of the last eight years? This is what is happening. All right. The idea okay, of Nigeria your being brother, plunged your candidate into has... the, the idea of Nigeria being plunged into multi-dimensional poverty <laughs> was one of his main issue on the program yesterday. But I'd like, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like for you. Nigeria, well, you've answered some Jesus of those Christ. questions. Can but I answer you? No, I've heard, you I will. Have heard your question. You will. Can I but answer it now? I gave you five minutes to respond, but you haven't responded. But let me ask you this last question. What do you I, make? I, I want to respond to the sure, question. Sure. No, I, I insist on responding to okay, the question. Okay, go ahead, sir. Is it Bola Tinubu that cause beautiful? Is it Bola Tinubu that cause multidimensional poverty in Nigeria? How? 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 We are Christians. Today is Sunday, for God's sake. Let us fear God. How did Bola Tinubu cause a single problem in this country? How? Eight years, you were there. Well, he talked about the how many policies. People, how many people were lifted out of poverty? Is Bola Tinubu's fault? Bola Tinubu is not even one year in power. Okay, let's let's. People are complaining. Mr. Onakusa, Mr. Onakusa, please can me. I Don't... ask you a question? Because you asked, you said what problems has he caused? So let's talk about some of the problems we're facing today that we did not face before he was sworn in on the 29th of May, 2023. Can we talk about some of the exact problems we're facing? We have new inflation figures for monetary inflation. Niger the Naira has lost its value at a faster rate than under question. President. Uh, you did not answer OG's previous question, which was about Giwa, nepotism. Giwa Osage. Yes. Giwa Osage. Yes, sir. I, I will answer the, old, the first question before this, your question. About nepotism specifically. No, she asked about nepotism no, specifically. We, 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 we will. Oh. We, we are not having, we are not, we are no longer having a conversation if you will not allow me to answer the question. You, you can't detect to me. I'm just asking if you are right going to speak reply. on nepotism in government. Which nepotism? Which nepotism? Which nepotism? Is it the volatile mood that walked his own son out of a federal executive meeting that you are accusing of a nepotism? Well, the federal executive meeting has, has people oh, who what what yes <laughs> there's there's what, legal what, requirements what for who me? can be on the federal executive council meetings right this is a very important meeting no, and nobody then, then, then what what, what we're, are ta you we're, we're talking about the appointment of his son-in-law 
to be in charge of the Federal Housing Committee Commission, my apologies. No, he, he is not qualified. Are you more qualified than him? What do you mean by that? What, what's, what's the point? Listen to me. Nobody. Uh, listen, listen. I'm not going to dance to this, this gaslighting you are, you are trying to do, my, my adorable daughter. Nobody should threaten anybody in this country. We are one country. Do you know the kind of people that support Bola Tiribu? Let nobody think that he can intimidate anybody. Not in this country. The people who support Bola Tiribu, we support him from the bottom of our heart. And we support him because we believe that this country is in a precarious state. And this is the kind of man we need to be our... People just... They, you, they, there's this narrative out there that people follow. Do I look like Daniel Bala? We, we, we don't collect money from Bola Tinubu. We spend our money on Bola Tinubu. If you don't know... All right. So, Mr. Onokwasa... I've said it on television. May I come okay? in now, if you don't mind? Mr. Onokwasa. All right. Can I come in now? Just two quick questions no. so that you do not uh, get agitated in any way. It's a conversation, just like you said. Uh, you've referred to the case... Yes. Let me be able to respond. That's yes. All I'm asking. No problem. No problem. I'll just ask you two quick questions and then you have the floor to respond. Our first is to respond on the issue of uh, Governor Bagu of Niger State, uh, who is mounting food blockade, you know, uh, um, uh, discouraging food, in fact, ordering that food should not come down south. You made reference to it. But then who is to act? It's, 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 breaking, it's breaking the law. Exactly. So who is to act? I said, who is to act? Uh, your man, Ashwajibola Metinubu, is the president of the country. We have not had any response from any agency of government on what Governor Bagu has done. That's one. Uh, secondly, Mr. Anokwasa, you mentioned, you referred to the case of subsidy and that subsidy had to go. Correct. Subsidy had to go. But then are you aware that we are now paying probably double on subsidy than what the president uh, uh, claimed that he canceled, that he removed by May 29. Are you able to confirm that if indeed the landing cost of petrol as of today is more than okay. is more than a thousand? Just one, just 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 one moment. If it's more than a thousand now, it, it only means that we are paying much more. On subsidy than we were paying Hello. before May 29. Yeah, we, there, there's, there, there, if anybody who has evidence that subsidy is being paid is uh, quite free to present such uh, such evidence. What I can tell you for sure is that President Tinubu has been uh, using creative means to stabilize the uh, supply of oil to Nigerians as he's equally using creative means to uh, bring down prices, which the citizens of this country will see soon. As for Governor Bago, uh, I, I don't know <laughs> who, who, who he think he is, that he, he can disrupt uh, trade, he can violate freedom of movement, he can violate freedom of commerce, he can dis uh, uh, violate freedom of contract, no problem. If, if, he, if, he, if he thinks that is what he's entitled to do, he will know that even a governor with immunity is not above the law. Okay? Now, we are patriots. Okay? And it's not a tit for tat. We are one nation, one country, one destiny. All right? Nobody has the right to block anything from being transported across Nigeria. Because if we do that, we will no longer have a country. Let's respect each other. And let nobody tell us about protest. Protest for what? The protest we did not protest for eight years. Eight years of, of indolence. So we're talking about the health of the nation now. And one of the major topics we're talking about is food inflation and how a lot of Nigerians are hungry. Do you think the current administration is doing enough to treat our food insecurity issues in the country? Uh, uh, good morning, all. Uh, uh, it's not doing at all. It's doing nothing. 
the primary problem is that it doesn't even understand the cause. It's in denial. The primary cause of what we are going through today is, is the recklessness of this government and this president by suddenly removing fuel subsidy on the day he was inaugurated without looking at the balance sheet of the, of the country, without consulting, and without knowing what the problems are. Flippantly, on, the May, on May 29th, just removed fuel subsidy without having any fallback plans. You don't do that, and that's why we're going through all of this. Price of food is going up. Inflation, as I said yesterday, was 29.9. The dollar, when they came to the Naira, was 680. Today is 1,500. Everything is going up. And they are surprised because they don't have a plan. And I said it from the outset that on, on, in, in August last year, that tinubonomics is nothing but a very painful pill for everybody to, to die. And people are dying. This president started this policy without, before he even assembling his, his team. It clearly showed that he, the president was being advised by shadowy armchair theoretical economists that know little or nothing about the sufferings of our people. And we all know all this policy is just a prescription they got from the World Bank in Washington, DC. They got a prescription. And that prescription is killing our people. We've been raising our voices, telling the president and the governors, the president go, looks like he's just drowning. And the economic team, all they are doing is like flailing their arms as if they are drowning. I saw the tr three economic team the other day on TV at the National Assembly, and I was a lot more depressed than when it started. The Minister of Finance, the Central Bank Governor, and the FIRS boss, the honest truth is that they do not know how to get out of this mess. The self-inflicted pain they've put this nation through. They don't know how to get us out of it. And we are warning them. And we do not see what Martin Luther King referred to as the fierce urgency of now from this government to get, out us, to get us out of this mess. We are in serious trouble. Everything must stop. There is hunger in the land. Democracy means nothing to a hungry, angry, homeless man or woman. Yeah. What they are doing is akin to a doctor coming into a room, patient's room, and just looking at the numbers. Oh, the blood pressure is this, the pulse is this, instead of looking at the patient. They have no connection with our people. Our people are suffering. Millions of people, predominantly women and children, go to bed hungry in this country, this country of plenty. Nigeria has no reason to be poor. Nigeria is not a poor country, but our wealth is in the hands of a few. And we see that, even the, the cost of governance. They are living as if it is 1999. Our people are dying. That is why in the North, we had the voices of our traditional rulers. And they should take it seriously. You remember when the first lady visited the Emir of Kano two weeks ago? The Emir of Kano told her, go and tell Mr. President that our people are suffering. There is hunger in the land. It was a coded message because if the president does not read the papers, if he does not go through social media, if his advisors would not tell him the tru truth, the Emir was telling the wife, go and tell Mr. President. As a follow through, all traditional rulers in the North met in Kaduna three days ago, and they came out with a screaming headline all papers took three days ago, read by the Sultan of Sokoto. And this country is sitting on a keg of gunpowder and there is nothing more they can do to stop the anger of their people. They've run out of excuses. In the north, our traditional rulers are the last bus stop. 
when they start talking, leaders need to sit up and listen. We're in big trouble. Our traditional rulers and our clerics, two days ago, yesterday, the sermons in all the mosques in the north, uh, people are suffering. There is hunger in the land. People are dying in the midst of plenty. Leaders sit up. Any leader who does not listen to the sufferings of his people does so at his own peril. What we are afraid of, we are not afraid of what is going to happen to politicians. We are afraid is what is going to happen to our country, Nigeria. This country we love dearly. This country that has given us more than we have given back. This country that has been formed on the blood and sweat and tears of our leaders past. No reckless politician is going to break this country up by his recklessness and not listening to the, to the, the, to the concerns of the people. All right, there prof. is hunger in the land. All right. All is not well. All right, Prof, uh, we heard you uh, loud and clear, uh, but I also know that you may not be a very big fan uh, of the president. Uh, you probably didn't support his aspiration when he uh, was trying to be the president of Nigeria. But of course, he's now the president, and you are looking at issues in terms of his policies. Now, uh, you've used the example of the Emir of Kano uh, sending a coded message to the president through his wife, the First Lady. But of course, you're also aware uh, that the predecessor to the Emir of Kano, uh, uh, SLS, uh, uh, Lamidu, Sanusi Lamidu Sanusi, has also come in defense of the president, uh, saying, stating clearly uh, that what is happening is not the fault of neither the president nor this administration, and that the seed for what we are witnessing today was sown during the Buhari administration. It doesn't sound to me like you have any blames whatsoever for the previous administration and what Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu met on the ground. Uh, all I heard you say is that this is a reckless government who is not listening to the yearnings of the people. But this is the same president that has declared emergency on food insecurity. It's the same president that has asked uh, that uh, everything needed to be done in terms of making food available should be done. But up north, you have governors like Bago in Niger, uh, whose answer to what is happening is to say that no truck with food item should be allowed to come down south. But you are putting all the blames on the president without um, seeming to address uh, the entire issues affecting food insecurity in Nigeria. What else would you like the president and this administration to do? Right, good. Emi Khan, he's the one who said he could do it. It's his turn. This is not the turn of President Muhammad Buhari. We spent eight years criticizing President Muhammad Buhari. We are tired. And I honestly don't want to even hear his name. He has messed this country up. And you, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, said, it's Emilio Khan, it's my turn. I can do it. There is a saying that leaders have forfeited the right to make any excuses. It's your turn. It's not President Muhammad Buhari that, that took away fuel subsidy flippantly. It is you. And you bear all the consequences of that, of that reckless policy. So... It is you that we will hold, we and God Almighty will hold responsible for whatever happens secondary to all your policies. It's not President Muhammad Buhari or Jonathan. You can do it. You said it's your turn. Now do it. Leaders have forfeited the right to make excuses. And the way they are going about it, they are doing nothing. Let me tell you, it is the cause, it is the, the reason is inflation. It's not because there is no food in the market. It's inflation. When this, government, when this party came in 2015, a bag of rice, 50 kilos of rice was 7,500. Yesterday I went to the market, it was 70,000. Maize, 60,000. How much is the, base, is the, is the minimum wage? 30,000. How much does a soldier in the war front earn? 50,000. How much does the police... Uh, recruit and uh, constable earns about that. They cannot even buy rice. 
30,000 in those who work. What is the percentage of Nigerians that work? So, Mr. President, sit up. We, th this is no time for excuses. Leaders have forfeited the right to make excuses. And the way they are doing it is, oh, they're thinking of price control. They're thinking of busting warehouses. Hello, I'm old enough to have seen 14 administrations. Clearly, from that of General Yakubu Gawan to currently President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we, in 1984, I was a young doctor, two years out of medical school. President General Muhammad Buhari followed the same thing. Price control, busting warehouses. Where did it take us? They haven't learned anything in 40 years. They haven't learned anything in 40 years. Yesterday, NLC, the president of NLC, Joe Ajero, said, you can give a million naira to workers if inflation keeps eating that up, you are not going to achieve what you are going to, what, what you need to achieve. The primary problem is the runaway inflation. The economy is out of control. The managers of our economy, they are drowning. They don't know what to do. They are the ones that cause the deterioration of the exchange rate of the Naira, the inflation we see, and the cost of food and everything in the market. It is not availability. There is food in the market. What I call on all the governors of this country and the president, everything should stop still. This is no time to build bridges or flyovers. This is the time to open the treasury and buy food and give food to the people and subsidize food. The only way you can crash down the price of food is bring down inflation. But these guys don't know how to do it. But flood the market with subsidized food. I lived in the United States forever. Everywhere in the world there is subsidy on food. You go to the supermarket, everything has tax. But food item does not have tax. Why? Because leaders of those countries know that hunger in any land has national security implications. But apparently, the national security team of this president and the president himself do not see the national security implications of hunger in the land. There is food in the land. The state and the federal government should open the treasury, buy food, import food, ship food into this country. There is an emergency and feed our people. Their salaries cannot pay for food, cannot pay for rent, cannot pay for school fees. People are dying in the land. They are here in Abuja buying SUVs. With our compliant National Assembly, that says nothing. We are raising our voices the moment you hear our traditional rulers. The only of Ife said the same. People are suffering. Politicians know nothing about the people. They live with the people. You don't listen to that. You are here creating committees, one committee after the other. They are sitting and drinking tea while people are dying. No, your economic policy is not working. There is hunger in the land. And there is trouble ahead. No nation will have peace if there is hunger in the land. No military, no matter how strong, no police, no matter how strong, can quell the anger of a people that are hungry in the midst of plenty. So our call to the president and all the governors should make food available, forget this price control, forget this busting warehouses, bring in food, buy food from the market and subsidize food for the people while you keep wrestling us out of this economic mess you've put us in. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that uh, brilliant analysis, uh, Professor Usman. But let's uh, switch gears a bit. Now, considering the historical ties between Nigeria and Niger Republic, particularly in terms of trade and food supply, how do you anticipate the ongoing sanctions affecting food security and inflation rates? And what uh, measures do you believe should be taken to mitigate those effects? Also, given your extensive experience in, you know, in, in government negotiation uh, terms, what strategies do you believe that Nigeria should employ to navigate and potentially resolve this current diplomatic impasse that we're at with now with the Niger Republic over the same airspace sanctions to make sure that we're securing regional stability and stabilizing the ongoing political crisis within ECOWAS? 
Right, and, and uh, we are where we are today because President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's government botched this, this uh, negotiation with Niger after, the, after the, the military coup. You remember after the coup, the president unilaterally, as the president of the ECOWAS, unilaterally switched off the, lights, the electricity supply to Niger based on a treaty 60 years old unilaterally switched it off and put sanctions and brought up front what he should have kept as a trump card, brought up front the threat of violence. That if you don't do this, Nigeria is going to attack. He sent his military bosses everywhere to start. And that was what gave this military young men legitimacies in their land. And they stayed entrenched. How can you threaten somebody, a country, your neighbor, and then say, oh, we're going to talk later? At a time when you didn't even have your cabinet, your security chiefs were just getting their feet wet. Unilaterally, you did all this without consultation. Northern Nigeria, people in Niger are our blood brothers and sisters. There are houses full of these canuries everywhere. The border is just artificial. ECOWAS was created 49 years ago by General Yakubu Gon and his, and his uh, fellow presidents of, the West, of West Africa then. Next year it will be 50. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in nine months has destroyed what was created 49 years ago, what has lasted 49 years. Because of lack of consultation, because of hubris. Seven states of the Federation in the north, from Kebi to, to, to Borno, have borders, common borders with Niger Republic. People have been suffering. We have been screaming our voices and saying people have been suffering in these border communities because of closure of, of medicines were not going in, food supply was not going in. This is not the first time there were several coups in Niger Republic. Leaders passed, navigated that, and found a way to resolve it as big brothers, as big brothers. Now what he has done, this botched diplomacy, what he has done, it has pushed this, 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 this young coupies in Niger, in Mali, and, and, and Burkina Faso. Say, we are leaving. How can you be at peace? How can you sleep with your two eyes closed when you're fighting with your neighbor? Niger is not only related to us linguistically and by heritage, but security-wise, they play a pivotal role in securing Nigeria, and in helping fight banditry and Boko Haram in the Northeast. And they are part of the multinational joint task force. You didn't consider all of that? You didn't consider the impact on your, on your citizens? You just did what you did. And now all of a sudden, when these three soldiers say, we are leaving, we are not interested in ECOWAS, oh, they are running after them. So it was wrong. We are in more difficult security situation with Niger and Mali and Burkina Faso out of the ECOWAS than when they were in. Democracy, diplomacy must continue to bring them back in. The threat of violence is not uh, the right thing to do. Sanctions should be lifted and uh, diplomacy continuing because our people in the, in the, in the border states are suffering. Primary responsibility of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is not ECOWAS, but to his citizens. We've been telling him, we the citizens in the seven border states, our people have been suffering. He's, he, he wasn't listening. So you have problems with international uh, diplomacy. You have problems internally with your economy. People are suffering hunger, and you have insecurity. And you're not listening to people? There are too many things for any president just eight years into his government. Step back, Mr. President, consult widely, open the treasury, bring in food as an emergency, flood the market, and feed our people. That's the only way to find respite. Bring temporary peace in this country before your economic team sort themselves out. Because to be honest, they need to be humble enough to ask for help. They need to be humble enough to ask for help. I don't see them doing it the way, it's all talk, 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 talk. Big grammar will not do it. Consult widely. We cannot continue this way.
people are suffering. The, the Naira is, 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 is deteriorating every day. Inflation going everywhere. People are being pauperized every day. In a country where we have 135 million, 33 million in multidimensional poverty, this government in one fell swoop has added millions more into extreme poverty. In a country where you have more than 20 million children out of poverty, predominantly in the north, you have added a lot more in, out of school. How can there be peace in any society like this? And you're spending a lot more money on buying Tucano jets. No military, no matter how powerful, can bomb poverty, can bomb hunger, mm. can bomb grievances. So listen to us, Mr. President. Nigeria is not, uh, uh, is, is not in good shape. This, the sheep of state is drifting, and you're not listening to the sufferings of our people. Our emirs in the north and the Oni of Ife, uh, they have told you the pulse of the nation. Listen. Do not listen to your advisors that are telling you anything differently. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So I want to ask something, because yesterday the president nominated his son-in-law as the head of the Federal Housing Authority, which, spark, which was sparking concerns about nepotism. And previously, the movement of FAN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, certain de, um, departments, and departments of the Petroleum Commission have been framed in terms of it being an Amy Local or a Yoruba-centric government. You've also spoken about the issues in Niger and how people in Niger are Hausa and Fulani and Kanuri as well, and are the brothers of people in northern Nigeria. You've also spoken about traditional rulers and clerics coming out to speak about the issues being faced by the people, hunger, insecurity and particularly in northern Nigeria. Now, my question here is, do you believe that President Tinubu is not sensitive to the issues concerning northern Nigeria? Do you believe he is not prioritizing people in the north? And do you believe that his policies have impacted the north more than they have the south? OK. One, one, one answer. I mean, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's injection and prescription of suffering is felt all across the country, all across. He has been, he has been uh, not helpful to, every, to everybody, every Nigerian. Back to your first question. You remember during the time of President Muhammad Buhari, the Southern press, they were talking about fulanization of Nigeria, Islamization of Nigeria. Well, now it is fair to say we are now at a time where it is Yorubanization of Nigerian economy. Because all ministries, departments, and agencies that control and disburse money, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has given it to people of his ethnic group. And he is sneakily moving major MDAs back to Lagos. The excuse they are telling us, all the reasons they are telling us are congestion. Hello, Lagos, the, the, the federal capital was moved from Lagos to Abuja. One of the biggest reasons was congestion in Lagos. And another thing is centrality of Abuja. The government is not telling Nigerians why it's doing all of this move. Doesn't care. If I have a son, or my daughter, or my wife is working in central bank or whatever, I don't have any in central bank. Because all of these juicy places in Nigeria, they have become places for the children of the politically exposed. Oh well, yeah, they take the ministry back there, or oh, my wife will remain there, so there will be massive attrition of people in the north in these agencies. And people in the north are seeing, forget whether it's true or not, the president must listen to what the people are saying. People are saying that all these moves are having just of things to come. The president's final plan, according to what people are saying, is to move the capital, federal capital, back to Lagos. 
And people are saying, oh, he's fixing. He's, he's put a lot of money fixing Dodan barracks, and he'll move back there. Well, you talked about him appointing his son-in-law as the managing director of Federal Housing Authority. And the next day, he pumped this ministry with over 200 billion. This agency with over 200 billion for mass housing. I don't know if there's any other name but reckless impunity and nepotism. If President Buhari had done this, the whole of the Southern press would be on him. So this government, this president is recklessly reckless. It's not listening to the people. And he needs to remember, if Nigerians do not know, 62% of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's 8.8 and a half, 8 point something million votes, 62% of those votes came from the North predominantly from the Northwest. He lost Lagos. He's a politician. He lost his home state. 62% of those votes are, came from the North, predominantly the Northwest. <coughs> so, needs to be careful. He's a politician, and he is working like a one-term president. He's doing like he doesn't care. People that voted you in, predominantly, they are the ones you are sidelining. So Pro these right, movement prof. of these MDAs to, to Lagos uh, are not good, good news for the North. All right, Prof, just a quick one before we let you go. Uh, you've mentioned uh, the pulse of the nation and how traditional rulers uh, are you know, speaking out. Uh, but a lot of people will say that we see uh, more of this from the North and the Southwest. Surprisingly, it's been rather curiously quiet uh, from the Southeast and the South South. Will there be a reason for that? Um, and, and if the agitation for better governance continues in the North and in the Southwest, which ordinarily ought to be pro the president, do you think that there is a political implication for the president in all this? Very, very briefly, sir. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know why the Southeast is quite uncharacteristically quiet. But then the president needs to find out. The North is what, where I know where I live and my heritage is. The silence in the North is more lethal than the noise anywhere else in the country. And the president needs to, needs to, needs to uh, listen to that. The silence from the North from the people of the North, in spite of all the sufferings they're going through, it's more lethal than people coming out. We are going into the month of Ramadan. People are going to pray. We urge the president, buy food and flood the market and feed the people before things get too late. Mm. The whole country is suffering. There is hunger in the land. We hope you listen. Don't listen to your advisors. Ad ad bring a lot of money to feed. Don't wait on the governors. Because you gave them 72 billion, 22 billion each, 72 billion to feed people, to feed people, 36 states. At the same breath, you gave members of the National Assembly 75 billion to buy cars. That shows your priorities. Your priorities is to make the National Assembly more malleable than the nation. There is trouble in the land, there is hunger in the land. It's our right and responsibility to speak for those that cannot speak and for the president to sit up and our leaders to sit up. There is trouble ahead. Our traditional rulers have lifted their burden mm. and put it on you. It's time for you to listen. Thank, and thank you. you all very much. This is BOD TV Board. In case the first time you come here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more uploads.